before I begin talking about the value, let me preface this by apologizing because I forgot to hit record on Camtasia. So I actually painted maybe about five or ten minutes without recording anything. So I'm just flipping through my layers right now and trying to show you what I did. Um, I had my line drawing set to multiply and I started painting the values below the line drawing and then painting on top of the line drawing opaquely. If you look down at the little picture-in-picture -picture video, you can see that I had recorded myself with the real camera doing these steps. So it's going to be a little delayed. On the bottom, I'm showing you how I'm filling in the value, and then in the normal Photoshop window, it's like 10 minutes ahead of that. I tried to pick a little bit of a different angle for the picture-in-picture -picture video to try and make it so that you can see what I'm actually painting in Photoshop a little bit better because the other angle is kind of hard to see what I was painting. Um, this one is still kind of hard to see what I'm painting and see the bust at the same time. But um, you get the idea. Okay, so <clears throat> back to the value drawing. I'm painting opaquely now on top of the line drawing since you know I don't want to have my figure outlined in this pencil drawing. And I want it to be all value. And right now I think I'm using that rectangular chalk brush. Uh, I'm going to be switching between this and the round brush. Um, I don't think I really use any other brushes in this tutorial. I might use the airbrush tool a little bit, but I think mainly I'm going to be using the rectangular chalk brush and the Photoshop default round brush. Actually, yeah, this rectangular chalk brush is a Photoshop default as well. So not too many custom brushes for this. And that's usually how I work with all my paintings. I don't use that many custom brushes. Just because I don't like to rely on painting effects because of a brush. I like to be able to achieve the same type of effect using normal brushes. And that's just a personal preference because when I was in school, I was brought up using digital, or not digital, um, traditional media, so we didn't have, you know, special chain brushes and things like that. So I would try, or I would just have to paint everything with the paintbrush that I had. Now, due to time constraints and deadlines and everything, I do use some custom brushes like the chain brush. Um, I have like an abstract brush that I use for painting background when I first started painting. Okay, so now that when I'm color picking, that uh, radial dial thing pops up showing me which color I'm picking. So I'm actually using CS5, not CS3. Um, I switch in and out of the different CS programs. So I am in CS5. And I actually just got CS5. I think this is the first time that I'm using it. And I don't think I really take advantage of the new features in this tutorial. Um, one of the ones is the canvas rotate. You know, Painter had that option for years in Photoshop. Still had never put it in, but finally in 5, they put that in there. Actually, I think it was in 4 too, but I've never used 4. Okay, so now I'm going into the shadows right now, and I'm just painting in the cast shadow from the breast. And also painting in the reflected light and also the core shadow. So I'm just squinting now and looking at the model, trying to compare the values. Trying to fix some of my edges. And I'm thinking about the values, the shapes, I'm thinking about my edge control, the hard and soft edges. So this right here, I'm softening this part right here, and then up towards the shadow up here, I'm going to be painting in a harder edge. So within this one little muscle shape, I'm getting a hard edge and a soft edge. The other thing I forgot to mention when I started adding the value is that if you notice on the layer below the one I'm painting on, the one that has the layer mask, that's my line, um, where my line drawing is. 
lot of times when I have a line drawing and I want to paint opaquely on top of it, I try and create a layer mask so that I can erase out the line work but still have it there if I ever need to go back to it. So at this point I pretty much have most of my shadow shapes mapped out and that's usually what I do when I first start out um, a painting is I try and map out where the shadows should be and now that I have those in place I can go in with a lighter value and start painting in the light areas of the painting and so I'm using the rectangular chalk brush and I'm just painting in this lighter area on the chest You'll notice I'm trying to paint in the direction that the different planes are going. So I guess you could say I'm painting with the grain instead of against the grain, if that makes sense, I guess. So even with these textured brushes, um, you can still get a variety of edges if you make the brush small enough you can get a, a hard crisp edge so that's what I'm doing a lot of times with these so you'll notice I'm color picking quite a bit and I'm not zooming in at all I don't think I really zoom in for any part of this painting other than to show you what my brush work looks like and that's just because I don't want to zoom in and get bogged down in little details and when you're zoomed out it's a lot easier to see your drawing as a whole and compare all the elements to each other and make sure things are lining up correctly so here I opened up the reference photo in Photoshop so that you can see the bust a little bit more easily since the picture-in-picture -picture video is at a different angle so this way you can kind of compare what my painting looks like compared to what I'm seeing. Now this time the photo is actually opened up in Photoshop so I'm alternating between looking at the bust in real life and looking at the bust in Photoshop for my painting. Most of the time I'm still trying to paint from life. If you notice in the photo the, air, the shadow areas get super dark so it's really hard to see what's going on and that's where looking at the bust in life helps because I can actually see what those shapes are doing in the shadows. So you notice me earlier using the um, marquee tool to kind of compare proportions. So I'm making a few little changes. Um, I think my the belly button was over too far so I had to move that back over to like, the center line of the body. So yeah, I'm just trying to get these angles to be a little more accurate yeah, as compared to the reference. If you notice right below her right breast, there's this little shape and that's where the breast attaches to the chest. Now remember that the breast sets, sits on top of the chest, so you're actually going to have your rib cage and everything continue around your body and create overlapping shapes. And these overlapping shapes are things that will help you create a more realistic painting and also help with things like foreshortening. And it's one of those things that a lot of times you don't really think about or remember to put in paintings when you're painting from your imagination. So I'm just looking around trying to figure out what area I want to paint next. And I'm thinking I'm going to go up here and fix the shape of the neck a little bit. The angle was off compared to the reference. And I'm going to the round brush. And this one is actually the hard round brush. There's no opacity to it at all. So it's 100% opaque. And I'm just trying to put in these little highlights just to show that this is a really hard edge. So 
So I'm going to go and um, paint in the background. So I'm selecting the background layer. So that's behind the painting. So you'll see that um, on some of the layers above, I actually painted the background back in. So I'm going to go up and change it to multiply. That way I don't have have those uh, lighter lines on top of it. So this layer is on top of everything. And I'm just blocking in this dark area behind it just to make the figure pop more. And I'm using the rectangular chalk brush dish just to give it a little more texture make it look a little more painterly so I'm not being too careful you'll notice sometimes I go over the body a little bit I can just go back and paint those out later So again, I have to go up on top. I'm now I'm on a normal layer, so I'm painting opaquely instead of multiply. I just don't want all these weird variations um, in the back. I kind of want to make sure that they're all the same color or tone, I guess, or value. So now this opposite side, I'm painting in the background over here. And I'm probably going to fade it off as I get higher, just to give it a little more interest instead of just painting everything black. So you notice, as soon as I added this black background, everything really popped, and um, my shadow area looks like it's a lot lighter now because you have this almost completely black background right next to it. So I'm probably going to have to go in and make the shadows a little bit darker. So up there with the armpit, I was painting in the overlapping shapes that I was talking about before where you can see her back continuing on behind the arm. The other reason I'm not really zooming in very much is because I want to make sure that my painting doesn't become too detailed and refined, so I want to leave it a little more painterly. So painting zoomed out can usually yield a more painterly result because you're not zoomed in, you know, painting tiny little lines everywhere. You're using bigger brushes. So I'm just going in and reinstating some of the dark areas and trying to work in some of the lights. Now this area over here is a little tricky because it goes from a soft edge to a hard edge. So trying to mimic that can be a little tough sometimes. In that area, that's where your pecs insert onto your arm and that's what's creating that like where your armpit is I think the insertion point of the pecs is on the lateral side of the humerus a lot of times people think that knowing anatomy doesn't really help that much and knowing where origin and insertion are of certain muscles don't really matter but it does matter um, in certain cases especially when you're painting from your imagination you know when you're painting from reference it's not as important because it's there right in front of you but if you're trying to create it from your imagination then you need to try and remember how shapes are on the body I remember when I was taking my anatomy classes at the Academy of Art, the first thing I told myself on the first day was, you know, I'm not going to just memorize these things for the test. I'm going to actually try and learn them because I want to use this knowledge to be able to paint better from my imagination. 
So, you know, starting out, I set a goal to actually learn the stuff. And for the most part, I remember a lot of it. I don't remember, you know, all the different muscles and all the different origin and insertions, but most of the major ones, um, I still remember. So you'll notice I keep trying to go back into the background below everything and paint in the background, but I keep running into the problem where I had painted on top of it on another layer, uh, the background color. And I do that a lot because I usually don't keep my figure separate from the background. That's just not the way I work. So when I do try and keep it from separate from the background, a lot of times I forget and I'll paint the background color around it. So that's one of those things that I usually have a hard time remembering to do. So because of that, I had to go on a layer on top of everything and paint in the background opaquely. So the background shapes, I'm just trying to get some interesting um, painterly shapes. I guess make it look a little more like charcoal or something. It's a good contrast, the loose textured brush shapes next to the hard edge outline of the bust. So you'll see on the breast over here, I, I had painted over it because of the background, so I'm just going back in and fixing my drawing. So yeah, since I have a line drawing, I'm not too worried about sticking completely to the line drawing. I don't want to make this like a coloring book or anything, so I'm not really worried about painting over my lines that I have. That'll just give it a little more of a natural feel, I think, instead of trying to stay so contained within these predetermined lines. Because, I mean, even though I did a line drawing, it doesn't mean that my line drawing is correct. So don't be too worried about going back and fixing things. So now I'm continuing on to painting in the light areas of the bust, and below the breast over here, You'll notice is a good place to have this really sharp edge. And it's a good contrast between the sharp edge down here and then as the breast rolls up and continues over, it turns into a softer edge. And same with the, these muscles over here. You have it go into the core shadow and then as the other shape takes form, it forms this harder edged area. I think I'm still using the rectangular chalk brush for this. And throughout this whole process, I'm gradually making my values darker and lighter. So I try and work up to both ends of the value scale gradually instead of throwing in my darkest dark and my light is light at the beginning. Um, I guess this way I can get more of my transitional values instead of having it so, be so contrasty. I'm just painting in this shadow shape over on the far shad or far shoulder. If you squint, you can kind of see the shape that the shadow makes and how the deltoid emerges from that shadow into light. So again, playing with hard and soft edges over here. And I'm going to paint in the shadow shape on the back of the shoulder just to pop the image away from the background a little bit because the values of the background and the shoulder were starting to mix a little too closely. Just adding in some darker areas on the neck up here. Just trying to show that this is a, a hard edge and it makes an abrupt turn. I'm 
fixing some more shapes. And that's how I usually paint. I will fix areas by painting the background around it instead of leaving the figure on a layer and erasing things out. I usually just use the paintbrush. And that's how you would paint if you're using a traditional medium. And that's about it for this part of the video. And the final part is just the final rendering and final touches. So if you have any comments or questions, please let me know. Thanks.